So last time we looked at the array contract. And it says, give me something that you claim is an array. I will invoke this magic toString method on it. And if it comes out with the right pattern, then it's an array. Otherwise, we throw this exception. If it passes the test, then I return the array back to you. This lets us do things like like this. And we get out the array 1, 2, 3, which is great. If, on the other hand, we had passed in string, which just from the printout we wouldn't be able to tell was any different, um, then it throws a type error. It says, nope, you gave me the wrong thing. One point to note, in the last video, I forgot this line, and so it wouldn't compile when I hit run. Make sure you say equals function x there. So this time, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about contracts for arrays. While it is useful to have something that checks that it's an array of something, uh, it's more useful to be able to say this is an array of say 32-bit integers, or this is an array of strings, or this is an array of arrays of strings, or something like that. Um, so this time we're going to look at a functor which is going to be able to work both on contracts, so if you hand me a contract for 32-bit integers, I will hand back a contract for arrays of 32-bit integers, and if you hand me a guarded function that goes from, say, strings to booleans, I will hand you back a guarded function that goes from arrays of strings to arrays of booleans. Now, just from that type signature, you ought to be able to guess that this functor is related to the map method of arrays, and that's true. Um, so. What we've got is our array of is a function that expects a contract C and then it returns a function that expects an input, that is it returns a contract and contracts expect inputs. Now, this input ought to be an array, so I'm going to use the name A. Return array of A. Make sure that A is an array, and then map the contract over it. And there we go. So really, array of is just map in sheep's clothing, as it were. Um, if we get a contract here, say int 32, then we get an array, and we say for each element in this array, apply the contract to it. Well, the contract is just the identity on 32-bit integers, so if it's an array of integers, it just returns the same thing back again, on the other hand, if any of the items of the array are not 32-bit integers, one of them will cause an exception and um, the program won't continue. So that's a functor acting on a contract. And I said that a functor can also act on a guarded function. Well, map, of course, can act on any function. Um, and any old function is, is a guarded function 
uh, going from any to any. But say we have some other uh, guards on it, say going from strings to booleans. Well, it applies that guarded function to the first element of the array. If the first element of the array is not a string, then the input guard will throw an exception. Assuming they're all strings, then what we get out is, for each string, a Boolean value, and the result, of course, is an array of Booleans. So, this is a functor. It acts on both the objects and the morphisms of our category, and produces new objects and new morphisms.